How's it going everybody? This podcast is brought to you by Rise Make Life Workout, a health, self-development and lifestyle platform building a passionate community of knowledge seekers, creative dreamers and future leaders. For details on the latest Rise event that will feature expert speakers in the field of self-development and growth, check out www.rise-workout.com. That's www.rise-workout.com. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of Rise Optimize, where we make science simple to help you optimize your health. And today I'm joined by nutritionist and public health practitioner, Amanda Bryan. Thanks, Sinead. So today, short, fast episode where we are covering money saving tips, which I think is very relevant given the current climate where food just tends to be getting more and more expensive. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, yeah, I was going to look at some stats, but then I thought they're just going to be outdated ASAP the way things are going. Like, I think Mm. we've all seen the headlines um, since the start of 2022 when you look back to the previous year, particularly fruit and vegetables are just increasing in price Mm. month by month. And it's, yeah, it's really hard because we already know that most people aren't getting the five plus a day, the servings of fruit and vegetables that's recommended. And if the Mm. price is going to keep going up, that's just going to make it even harder for people to achieve those recommendations. Mm. Yeah. So we'll get into a few of the tips. What would be some of your top tips for, I guess, saving money at the, the checkout? So I guess there's five key tips. So should we just go through each of them or? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So the first one, is not really about nutrition it is about just getting organized and being planned and it might feel like it's a bit of a chore to plan out your meals for the week but if you can do that even if you're just starting with one or two days if you can plan what you're going to eat to inform your shopping list then that's going to save you money at the till if you just try and stick to that shopping list be Mm -hmm. organized because then you're not going to get caught out when you get home and Maybe you feel like something, but you don't have all the ingredients, so you pop out to the shops again. Because we know the more times we go to the shop, we tend to spend more because, you know, Mm -hmm. there's wonderful smells, there's cool Mm -hmm. things to look at, there's specials that can be really, really tempting. So if you can get into the routine of planning your meals, whatever rhythm works for you, whether it's every couple of days, Mm -hmm. every week, then that can be really helpful. Yeah, definitely. And, and sort of like you said, having that list that you're going to stick to and follow while you're at the shop so you're not tempted to just go down every aisle and grab whatever's on special. Yeah. And I mean, you <laughs> might not be perfect. It's not going to happen every time. Mm. Don't beat yourself up. And, you know, sometimes there are new things that you wouldn't have seen mm. or there is a really good special. So, I mean, if we can be trying to stick to our list most of the time, that's mm. going to help us save money. Yeah. Um, and what would be another tip so following on from that um how we're shopping Mm -hmm. so like i said like the supermarkets are designed to make us spend money from the temperature from the layout from the music that is played in the background everything Mm -hmm. is designed to keep us there longer and to keep us spending more so all those like special little flags that are on um on the shelves as we go around often if you look at them some of them actually aren't specials but they make Mm. them kind of look like they are by just saying everyday value or super value Mm. it can lead us to think that oh i'm saving money we're actually it is a bit of a low price thing Mm. so there is the commerce commission in new zealand that does look into practices like that and you might have seen some articles from the likes of consumer nz so there are you know people out there that are monitoring this thing because that behavior is not really great and in new zealand there's been a really big study recently because there's really just two main players so Mm -hmm. they call it a duopoly in new zealand which does limit things from a consumer perspective because there's less competition competition mm. and economics 101 is around you know competition normally reduces prices so yeah I'm going a little bit off track so right. I will just loop back around so that second tip of shopping online mm-hmm. that means that it's easier to stick to your list because you're just entering searching for the things that you need there's less of the bright shiny things that are going to distract your attention as you're going around there the supermarket also it can help you tr- keep track of what you're spending instead of 
getting to the checkout and being like oh my goodness this is twice as much as I thought I was gonna spend but then you know feel a bit shy at mm. leaving things back so yeah I that's something I've started doing ever since the lockdowns were implemented and mm -hmm. I found that I've been saving more money just because mm. yeah not getting distracted by the bright shiny new things mm, and like you said you're just sort of buying what you need versus yeah seeing something on sale and being like oh i better buy that when you might not really need it or you're not really saving that much yeah and i mean if it's something you're going to use great but if it is something that you're not going to use and then it might go to food waste because you haven't mm. planned what you're going to use it in or you just get busy and end up eating out and then it's like a perishable item like fruit or vegetables mm. um, dairy products meat then it can go off and then mm. that contributes to food waste as well so that kind mm. of links back to the first point of you know having a bit of a plan of what you're going to eat mm. yeah um and moving forward on that other other tips so the third one is around like the store brand mm -hmm. so the supermarket owned brand products often people might think that they're like not as good as some of the products that have all the the flashy labeling and marketing um, but the university of auckland did this really massive study recently where they looked at i think around about like 20,000 products over a five-year time period they tracked all of them from a price perspective and they did a nutrition evaluation as well and what they found was um, the store brand products had at least the same nutritional value as the branded counterparts so I mean you don't have to feel bad if you're just going for all the kind of no home frills brand. options the home mm -hmm. brand from a nutritional perspective you're not missing out oh there you go and number four so number four is um, around trying to get more plants into our diet so again there's a lot of new things on the market now with plant-based alternatives for meat they can actually be a lot more expensive than meat products they mm. can actually be really ultra processed so have a whole lot of ingredients you might not recognize lots of added sodium or sugar or saturated fat which are the nutrients we need to be mindful of but actually there's other plant sources that don't feature a lot in our New Zealand diets that we could be taking advantage of. So a group of foods called the beans and legumes, mm -hmm. you probably know them more as the tinned beans, so things like chickpeas, kidney beans, lentils, black beans, there's a whole range of them. So swapping um, some, and it doesn't have to be all of meat, it could be just some of the meat so even like extending meals if you think of something like spaghetti bolognese or mm -hmm. a lasagna any meal that has mince in it mm -hmm. you could consider adding in a tin of lentils or a tin of kidney beans especially if you've got a lot of mouths to feed mm -hmm. that can be a way of making it go further but mm -hmm. not cost as much because meat is one of those um, categories that is going up and up in price similar to fruit and vegetables so mm -hmm. yeah and it can be a way of introducing some different nutrients into your meal as well New Zealanders aren't eating enough dietary fiber and we only get that from plant sources so by introducing beans or legumes that can help increase that fiber content and they're really really cheap too mm. I made a um, veggie cottage pie the other week shepherd's pie no nice. so it was the same thing that especially those little sachets which i'm sure probably aren't the healthiest they probably have a bit of sodium in them but um i noticed a lot of the sachets now for those kind of meals will say meat night or veggie night so when you flip it over on the back the recipe will say vegetarian or meat version so it'll oh. say like using oh. mints or it'll say you know use a can of lentils or whatever so yeah cool i didn't know that so that's yeah. a good tip yeah and often it might be a bit scary especially if you've got kids as well like the idea of swapping out all of that beef for lamb and mince entirely for a tin of um, lentils that might seem like it's not going to go down so well mm. so it could be just you know starting by adding, adding it, it in yeah. getting people to get used to the flavor the texture and all of that um yeah because yeah. trying new things can be scary sometimes yeah yeah um and last but not least the fifth one it's probably one we've all heard before but still important not just relying on the fresh fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. um, they can be more expensive they're more perishable so they don't last for as long the way we store them is really important um, so trying to use the the tinned or the frozen versions as well they're even going up in price but they are still cheaper than the fresh counterparts so mm -hmm. they can be a really good way of adding in some um, some more fruit and vegetables into the day at a at a lower price point other benefits are 
less waste mm -hmm. um you don't have to cut them up there's some really great mm -hmm. like frozen vegetable mixes where you can get like a whole beautiful rainbow of colors and they don't go off as quickly so mm -hmm. even if they are getting a little bit more expensive there's still benefits to having them over the um fresh versions and um yeah studies have shown again kind of like the store brand versus the branded products mm -hmm. there's not a nutritional difference between mm -hmm. the frozen the tinned the dried and mm -hmm. the fresh fruit and vegetables yeah i think that's always commonly a sort of reason that some people are a bit turned off by getting frozen veg because they think it won't be as nutrient dense as getting the fresh stuff but pretty much same same yeah yeah pretty much same same um and i mean it's a convenience as well like you can throw a meal together with things from your cupboard from your freezer and mm. it will be really great in terms of nutrition but you don't have to worry about being as organized and having the fresh stuff like mm. if you've always got them on standby in your pantry and in your freezer then you've always got like a source of um, fruit or vegetable to add into a meal too yeah great tips if people want any more advice or more info where can they find you they can find me on instagram so it's at amanda.ate so amanda.8 and yeah Awesome. Thanks for all that info. I'm sure we'll be all saving a lot more money now next time we hit the shops. I hope so. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs>